Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. We've gone outside the box. Once again, it's not just about the North Tonawanda and Tonawanda players. We've gone down the road. We're over in Kenmore right now. And uh, joining us today, two members of the Hall of Fame of the Ken East Hall of Fame. One is from New Jersey, John Dunnigan. And for Kenmore East, who's now... Uh, uh, filling in as, a, as an administrator, even though he retired in 2012, is Jim Dunnigan. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. How's everything going today? Good morning, better. Yes. <laughs> hey, let me, it's, um, it's March 1st while we tape this. I, let me be the first one to wish you guys a uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. It's an early one. That's a month. <laughs> thank you. It gets us started. <laughs> and it's a good start for, for March 1st now, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, I want to thank you so much, guys. I want to talk to you about um, Kenmore East football, North Tonawanda football. Between the two of you gentlemen, you, except for a couple of years, you pretty much covered the 1960s at Kenmore East. How was the foot? My first question to you is how was the football back then in, in the Niagara Frontier League back in the 1960s? It, it was um, it was hard hitting. That's the one of the things that I remember about it. And every every game you knew you were going to get rocked. So you had to prepare that way. You had to uh, get yourself ready. Uh, I looked at the um, video of the Ken Maurice North Tonawanda game my senior year. And the first play, North Tonawanda had, they did a sweep around the right end, right at me. I was the outside linebacker there. And number 21, the fullback, rocked me, knocked me back five yards. And I knew this was going to be a ball game. So, so it was hard hitting. And Jim, your experiences with the Niagara Frontier League and North Tonawanda during that time? Back in that time, the game was really played uh, between the tackles. It was, you know, a very, very few passes. I think we got more into uh, the passing game when, when I uh, played in the late 60s as opposed to when John was playing. I think we'd throw the ball 12 to 15 times, and maybe he would, uh, when he was there, his quarterback would throw seven to 10 times. But uh, it was pretty much a ground game. And like you said, it was, it was going to be nose to nose and belly to belly. And, the toughest guy wins. You guys brought up prior to, to starting the tape here about there's a connection between Ken Maurice and North Tonawanda. Can you explain that? Yeah. Um, before my senior year, you know, I, I was elected captain. So I went around talking to all the guys about, you know, what we wanted to do, who we wanted to beat most, and expecting everybody to say we want to beat West most. But I talked with Jeff Okers, my, my longtime friend, and he said, North Tonawanda. I said, North Tonawanda, why? He said, well, my dad played for George Vetter back at high school, and Jack Okers was our head coach. So the, the connection goes through Jack Okers. Pat Wiles, my JV coach, also played for George Vetter in North Tonawanda. George Saliba was the coach at Franklin Junior High School. Uh, Kenmore Junior. Oh, Kenmore Junior. Kenmore okay. Junior. And uh, Chet Bollier, who was in the North Tonawanda Hall of Fame, was our director of athletics uh, at that time. So, so there's, a, there's a connection and an ancestry line from, from North Tonawanda to Kenmore East. Was there a rivalry back then when you played North Tonawanda yeah. and Kenmore East? Well, it... it they, they had beaten us every game up until my senior year. So if there's a rivalry, you've got to establish it. And uh, in my senior year, we fought them tooth and nail to a 7-7 tie. So it was good, hard hitting, but I know they were more focused on Tonawanda than Kenmore East. I don't think we, we beat NT for the first time. The first time we beat them was my junior year. In the fall of 67, we beat them 19 to 6. And they walked off the field in disbelief. They never thought we'd come that close to them. But we had a, quite a bit of talent. We won 7 and 1 that year. Let me go back over to Ken Maurice and Ken Moore West when you're talking about rivalry. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in 1959, um, they went from one uh, high school in Kenmore to two high schools. Yep. Uh, and then at that point, you had East and West and, and People are amazed. It's kind of a, such a, a small condensed community like Kenmore that it could, number one, could support two high schools. But number two, um, an instant rivalry at that point. 
uh, between the two schools. Did you guys at Ken Maurice ever consider yourself or, or felt that you were the little brothers of Kenmore? No way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, no. everybody we were... that we played against on Kenmore West, we'd known since uh, we were probably six or eight years old. Uh, we would play uh, against them in Little League Baseball or uh, see them at, at the uh, junior high school. Um, uh, it was it was a face-to-face -face rivalry of people that we've known uh, for uh, for probably 10 years at least. And we, we grew up like uh, 200 yards away from the dividing line of the tracks. So you go to the store, you'd see half the guys you play against. How was the football back then? Were you guys respectful of each other or did uh, was it hard hitting and, and you guys uh, went for the throat? I, I think it was respectful. I, I mean, it's, um, you know, when, when you know people, uh, you play hard against them, you, 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 you go at them. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's uh, you're going to see them again. So, um, you know, be able to look them in the eye and say, yeah. This, this is what we do. We, oh. we play hard and uh, you know, we're, we're there. We're there to uh, respect each other. In the first game back in 59, so many of the players said they felt like they were scrimmaging at a practice because they had played against everybody the year before. And sometimes there were cousins playing against cousins. It was, you know, it was a, a friendly rivalry at best. We also, John and I also had a special relationship with, with Kenmore High School because our father was a custodian there for years. So we'd spend some time over there picking them up or dropping them off for work or going riding a bike through the, the halls or something like that. So Kimmer West wasn't too foreign uh, to us at all when we played them. As a matter of fact, many years later, I wound up as the assistant principal there for eight years. Those early years of the rivalry game, what type of crowds, how big of crowds did you attract for that, for that game? Uh, you're talking thousands, probably, you know, my senior year, I, I think we were talking six, 8,000 people. Yeah, uh, at least that. Yeah. Ringing, ringing the field. I mean, it was, they, they would set up uh, snow fences around the field, and it was five, six deep all the way around the field. The stands were full. Now, I mean, keep in mind that this was a time when there weren't that many things for uh, kids to do. I mean, everybody didn't play a year-round sport, and every father in the community seemed to be interested in the game, so they bring – the kids when they were young. Okay. You both had played for at one time, uh, legendary coach, Dick Adams. John, I know you, he was an assistant while you, when you played and Jim, he became head coach at that point. How was it playing for uh, coach Adams back then? You start Dan. He was, uh, when, when he was the assistant coach, he was the one that, um, he brought humor and, um, he was able to put some digs in uh, that the head coach couldn't. Um, he was a good motivator, good motivator. Um, and he was an innovator also. So um, we would do a little bit different things when he was around. <clears throat> but I played for him. He was just in total control of all aspects of the game. He knew everything he wanted to do. He studied the game so thoroughly and, and broke it down into simple, simple steps. And uh, hopefully we were smart enough to follow those steps in enough game to win. He coached from the years 1963 to 1977 as the head coach. You think he got out in, in the seventies because the Niagara frontier league was getting busted up and everything was going to be moved over to section six and by, uh, by uh, how big the schools were. No, the, the federation had started uh, in 1970. 70, I believe. So he was in the, the midst of that coaching against the bigger schools, Lancaster, West Seneca, um, Frontier, Jamestown. <clears throat> so he was in the middle of that. The reason he quit coaching is that his son, Ricky, was going to be a senior at Lehigh University. And uh, they had a pretty good team. So he wanted to make sure he would see all of his games. So he retired from Camarillo so he could travel each weekend to see Ricky play. As a matter of fact, that year, they won the, uh, the Division Two at that time, uh, college football uh, national championship. Did you guys, speaking of which, did you guys enjoy playing at nighttime under the lights or Ken Maurice was traditional and played Saturday under the sun in the clouds and the rain and the snow? 
uh, and the heat. And, <laughs> and the dirt. Uh, we played to our, all of our home games where we were at uh, Crosby Field in the afternoon. And uh, we we get a kick out of when we would go to uh, Niagara Falls or North Tonawanda or Tonawanda to play uh, under the lights. Uh, and that was, uh, it's an experience that uh, we wish we had more of, but it was, it was a, uh, yeah, it was a kick when we went to play there. In my senior year, we were supposed to play, I think, three or four games under the lights, but we wound up only wound up playing one at Hyde Park because some kind of there was a power problem out at LaSalle where we were supposed to play all those games. So rather than playing at night, we wound up playing at three in the afternoon or when there was an earlier after an earlier game at eleven in the morning. Did it ever matter to you guys that you were playing against some smaller schools like Conawanda or Trot Vocational or LaSalle High School? And on the other side, you were playing against bigger schools like North Conawanda and um, Niagara Falls. And it, back then, I, I don't know where Lewis and Porter fit into the mix. Yeah. Um, when you're out there playing, you're, you, you're not worrying about the size of the school. You're, you're playing against the other team. Uh, and not giving off statistics uh, there, but we weren't tiny. I mean, my graduating class had uh, something like 580 uh, students in it. So when you when you uh, start to add that up, that's a good uh, base to draw from. When uh, I didn't care, I don't care how many kids are in Tonawanda, they're going to be tough once I step on the field. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were. Exactly. And, you know, and, and, and again, um, like uh, John said, my graduating class was 850. And at the same time, Kemmer West had 950 in their senior class. So within one community, uh, one community, you're looking at 1,700 students or 1,800 students graduating at one time. I thought when I graduated in 1975 with 750 students was, was a lot. I, I didn't realize that it was so big at that point at Kenmore East and Kenmore West. Mm -hmm. Um, how was your, your, uh, the competitive competitiveness playing against Tonawanda and, and John, I'm going to talk to you because you played against Rick Casada. Yep. <laughs> we played against, uh, Rick, um, my freshman year in junior high school, my sophomore year in the JV program, my junior year, but then my senior year, because of the, the problems or because we had 10 schools in the league and could only play eight games we weren't scheduled to play against Tonawanda. Uh, but we played against them in basketball also and played against them in baseball also. So it was a, a continuing um, program. Here's, here's what Rick Casada looked like then, if you can see <laughs> this. Rick Casada and Clint Small. And over here is Greg Zayats from North Tonawanda and George Vetter. Right. It's amazing that you had those clips still. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a keeper. Good, good I got more you. I'm sending you, too. Good for you guys. Anything that you want to talk about Penmore East football or the Niagara Frontier League that I haven't brought up yet? Yeah. Um, I, I think one thing I wanted to point out when I, I was playing, we were still laying the foundations for, for the football program. Uh, when I played there was the third, fourth, and fifth year uh, of the program. So we were still learning how to do things, how to organize things, how to organize captain's practices in the summers to set up the, the weightlifting around the town so, so that the players would, would be ready. Uh, we, we also served as a focal point for the young kids in the area, which they hadn't had before, because to go to see the Kenmore High School team, they'd have to travel all the way across town. But uh, we, we set up the new, uh, uh, the new school, and, and then the kids from the um, eastern part of the town would, would find a focal point to, to go. Uh, and and the, um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was you know, the intensity of the players, that in that game of uh, Ken Maurice versus North Tonawanda uh, that you have up on the video, I, I looked down our roster, roster. We had Kenny Rutkowski, who went on to play at University of Buffalo. He was an all-league player, and he turned out to be a star there. Gary Dean, who was all Western New York, our, our center. Buzz Dinwiddie went on to, to, with a scholarship to play at UB. 
George Constantino was the all all NFL receiver two years in a row. Uh, Greg Walters became all Western New York. Um, Jeff Okers, the coach's son, was there. Bobby Young, the quarterback, went on to play quarterback with me at the University of Rochester. And the, the, the communities are so close here, North Tonawanda, Tonawanda, East and West, that we had Clint Small's nephew on our roster, Doug McKnight, and we had Jules Jakopovich's son, Paul, who was my backup at fullback for Kenmore East. So, so it, it's an integrated league. But that was just for one year until Jules bought, a, Jules bought a house on the other side of the track so Paul could play for him. That's right. And ironically enough, I was best man at Paul's wedding. So we all know each other very well. Yeah. You know, one thing, Doug, uh, Ed, that, that, that happened, I was fortunate enough after going to college and playing at the University of Rochester like my brother, I came back and I, uh, I coached with Sparky for four years. And at that time, he had continued to develop and grow the program and develop his mastery of this stuff that the teams that we had were, were just unbelievable. The talent that we had, the numbers that we could draw from. We sent kids, um, Steve Trousseau, as a matter of fact, um, you know, you know, you've heard quite a bit about that quarterback from Wyoming that the Bills have. Well, Steve was a quarterback at Wyoming many, many years ago as uh, Bobby Blamar was a receiver at Wyoming. We sent kids out to Syracuse and Jeff Fisher. Uh, Neil Boron played at Boston University. Um, uh, Jimmy Pritchard played at Columbia. You know, the program evolved so, so dramatically, uh, and, and, and uh, it, it's a credit to Sparky that he was able to continue to have the pro program grow, as well as sending these kids to, to tremendous uh, Division One schools. Wow. That, that... Not to discount the University of Rochester, John. I'm there with you. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, that's quite the accomplishment and, and, and quite the uh, history lesson that you guys are given at this point. Um, just simply amazing and, and, and mind-boggling at that point. Kenmore West, did Coach Yakupovich, when you guys played, was Coach Yakupovich the head coach at Kenmore West? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Had he developed the radar defense at that point? He was just starting it. Um, the, we didn't know, quite know what to call it, but um, we saw them standing up. And, and we said, you know, what's this? Why, why are they standing up? Well, they were standing up so that they could uh, move more quickly, I think, and move laterally more than trying to penetrate. Um, it wasn't refined at that point, but yeah, he was starting it. He was also uh, starting his thinking on uh, run and shoot offense, where, he, where, where there was a lot more motion, a lot more opening up uh, with wideouts on offense. So, so he was there and he was an innovator and a tough they guy. Were, they were, they were fully into uh, the radar when I was, when I played against them on uh, my junior and senior years, you go to block them and then all of a sudden they're not there. And uh, it, it's interesting. I play golf uh, every Tuesday night with a lot of the guys who uh, went to Kemmer West and Kemmer East. And we still talk about games from back in the sixties and uh, the personnel and uh, everything involved with it. <laughs> I mean, the, the radar defense, it just seems to me that it, it messed up all the blocking schemes on the offense because you couldn't hit a moving target. <laughs> well, if you had the right play, they weren't there, so they couldn't tackle you. <laughs> so that's true, too. Good, good point. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure and a great conversation with you this, this afternoon. I thank you so much. John Dunnigan from New Jersey, the Ken East Hall of Famer, the University of Rochester Hall of Famer. Jim, Jim Dunnigan. Hall of Famer from Ken Maurice, an administrator extraordinaire. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon here on the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. This was a lot of fun. Thank, thank you, Ed. You.